Hello and welcome to the second video of our recent, uh, the series of our recent cruise, uh, nine day cruise on Liberty of the Seas. Part two today is uh, Boston. And uh, Boston's a great place. It was our first visit. Uh, if you're into history, it's an outstanding place to visit. Uh, as you can see, uh, it was a little, little cloudy, overcast. Lots of this cruise was overcast and foggy, but uh, the temperatures were nice. As you sail into the port here in Boston, uh, on the port side, left side of the ship, you, you cruise by Castle Island. Um, it's no longer an island uh, since 1928 with landfill. Uh, it's, it's now attached, but it was an island. Um, the site of Castle William, it was a fortification built in 1634. This was, during the American Revolution, the main military base for the British Army. Um, the... Um, now, after the British evacuated in 1776, it was partially destroyed, then rebuilt. You can visit it now. Now, the port itself, Black Falcon Cruise Terminal, is an industrial area. Uh, here we're watching some buses arrive as they, they come to pick up passengers. Today, in this tour, we decided to do the hop-on, hop-off Old Town Trolley tour. Now, we're doing it not so much for the tour itself, but we're doing it as a means of getting around the town. Because to walk to Boston Common or Quincy Market, it's probably a little too far to walk from the, the terminal. So you need to find a way to get there. And uh, we decided the, the hop-on, hop-off trolley would be the best bet. Not only will it get us to where we want to go, central Boston, but it'll also get us around the entire city. And, uh, and that's a bonus. We have all day here. The entire trip around the circuit on the trolley is about two hours, perhaps a little bit more. Um, so we're going to use it as basic transportation, by the way, and, and we did it as an excursion on the ship. You don't have to do the excursion. There's a, a, a kiosk located within walking distance of the terminal that you can buy your ticket and, and, and do the bus tour. Um, so we went through the terminal here. We got our, our, our stickers, and we're going to get loaded on a bus, on a trolley. Now, of course, during the course of the day, you may travel on many trolleys. That's not a big deal. Uh, the original of the map that you usually look at online shows 14 stops. There are actually a bit more. Uh, on cruise days, they do come in and make a stop here at the terminal, at Black Falcon Terminal. So that's handy to know. Um, that's the old North Church in the background there. The, the thing to understand is central Boston's kind of compact, and you can get to the same places from several stops. Uh, stop 1, stop 5, stop 13, stop 14. You can walk to Quincy Market, Faneuil Hall, Boston Common, Granary uh, Burial Ground, all these places. So you can kind of just do what you want and go with the flow here. Um, so it worked out very well for us. I'm not trying to sell tickets for the trolley, but you're going to need a way around town. Um, we actually had enough time to get off where we wanted to get off, see what we wanted to see, and then before going back to the ship, take the entire trolley around again. Now we're approaching the um, um, Navy Yard, uh, and the Navy Yard is where the USS Constitution was built and where it is presently located, Old Ironsides, uh, commissioned in 1797 by the Washington administration. That in the distance is the Bunker Hill Memorial. Um, the Charleston Navy Yard here, uh, we were a little early to visit the Constitution. There it is in the background. Um, you do have to go through airline type security to get on it. Um, and mind you, later when we came by here, there was a, a long line waiting for the trolley. And I guess that's kind of a downside on the trolley because you do, you can run into some, some lines. The trolley comes around every 20 or so minutes. Uh, and, and we never had a problem with it, but I can see where perhaps it could happen at, at you know, high density times. But it's a good way to get around town. And, you know, you want to go to the places that you, you heard about, you know, Quincy Market, those places. But on the trolley, you have other options. You, you, you may not think about jumping down at Fenway Park and going to the Fenway Park gift store and, and that kind of thing. So it, it gives you a lot of options. That's Quincy, Hall, uh, Quincy Market in the background there, and you'll see more of that shortly. But uh, for us, it, it did work out. It, it was a, a good way 
I, I suppose you could have used a number of Ubers to go around, but, but this worked out better. That's Faneuil Hall, statue of Samuel Adams. We'll come back there as well. I was particularly interested in this is the uh, old state house. This is on that balcony is where the Declaration of Independence was read to the local town folk. And uh, that's Samuel Adams statue, Faneuil Hall. The uh, old state house is also the location of the Boston Massacre uh, marker from March of 1770. Quincy Market is a great place to find food and to find souvenirs and to walk around. Now again, we're a little early in the morning here, not real crowded. It will get crowded later, uh, so you know, be aware. And you know, it's like anything else, time management is important on an excursion, uh, especially this one, because yeah, you know, everybody knows that you're on a ship excursion, they won't leave you, but on this one, you're kind of on your own. You have to make it back in time. And uh, there are certain stops on this, uh, as I say, on this two hour, potentially two hour round trip around town, that uh, if you don't watch time too closely, uh, you could very easily make a mistake. So be aware of the time and, and use it wisely. Walking through Quincy Market here, you'll see lots and lots of different food vendors. We have several pictures and some video of, of this area. Uh, we did end up eating lunch here, and uh, you will see in a moment pictures of what we had. Food was very good. Uh, it's a nice place. It's well kept up. There are restrooms available. There's seating available, although during peak hours, the seating can get a little tough to find. We, originally, we, we got off on stop five, actually, and that's the old state house. You, you see the state house, the Boston Massacre site. You walk up Tremont Street, and you can get to places like the King's Chapel Burying, Burial Ground, Granary Burial Ground, uh, Boston Common, uh, Faneuil Hall, Quincy Market, all in this, in this general area. But as I say, it's only one of several stops you could choose to get off at. Uh, you could have gotten off at the Navy Yard and walked to the Bunker Hill Memorial, for example. So it gives you a lot of options. It, it really does. And with so much to see and, and, and time being limited in most cases, uh, it, it's a good option. And I think, like most people, you know, you, you want to try the local like Boston chowder there on the right, right? Well, you want to try lobster rolls, you want to try chowder, that sort of thing. Um, but there's a really wide assortment of, of items that you can get here. It's a walkable city, uh, but it is a big city. And, uh, you know, be aware. The crowds, uh, the traffic, it, it's, it's all part of it, but because most of the quote-unquote historic sites are fairly close together, uh, it can be done. Uh, and the map is handy, uh, for example, if you, want to go, if you want to go to Paul Revere, the Paul Revere house, that's stop number two, you can walk from there. Old North Church would also be stopped too. So it's, you know, it, it's, um, it's a good way to get an overview of the entire experience. Seating area again, and restrooms in this area as well. Stairs going up to, to the top. The second floor does have more seating. But again, it does get crowded. We weren't able to get a, a, a sit-down area. We, we ate at one of the elevated uh, stand-up table type things. It was fine. And along both sides on the exterior of Quincy Market are several kiosks with vendors selling souvenirs. You know, the usual stuff, hats, t-shirts, magnets, uh, local crafts and art, that sort of thing. Um... And of course, if you're not into this, there are the name brand restaurants and stuff that you'd find in a, in a big city. One thing about Boston, you can't walk more than 30 feet in any direction without hitting a Dunkin' Donuts. They're everywhere.
But if you want to see these sites and you're intimidated by you know, the big city, don't be. This is a way to get it done pretty easily. Um, and again, the trans you, you take the worry of transportation kind of out of it this way. A little glimpse through the door there are some of the vendors outside. This is the kind of rotunda in the center of the building. It is an interesting place. And uh, uh, like I say, if you're into history, uh, Boston won't disappoint, uh, you know. I suppose if you had more time, you could you could spend a good part of the day at any any number of these places. But trying to to get a taste of it, a piece of it during you know a a one day visit, uh, you want to try to cram in as much as you can. And shortly here, I think you'll see our our meals. I I wasn't very exotic with mine. I had a couple of slices of pepperoni pizza, which were good. But my wife did get the lobster roll and clam chowder, and she enjoyed it. Thought it was very, very good. And we have pictures of it here coming up. Uh, there you go. There's the pizza. It was good. And uh, she just loved the clam chowder and uh, the lobster roll. Now, this is the King's Chapel burial, burial grounds. Um, it's the oldest burial grounds in Boston, established in 1630. From 1630 to 1660, it was the only burial ground in, in Boston. There are 505 headstones, 59 footstones, 78 tombs, only 36 of which are marked. They believe, they estimate that probably about a thousand people were buried in this small area. Um, many Puritans, the uh, parents of Wolf, Wolf, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson are, are buried here. Um, as you can see, it's a quiet, respectful place. Uh, many of the, of the stones are in poor condition. They're barely legible, but, uh, but it's a beautiful place to visit. Now this tomb we're walking up to is William Dawes. He is one of the two other men who rode with Paul Revere on their midnight ride. Three men actually rode, they went in different directions. William Dawes was one of them. To warn the countryside that the British were moving inland. But it's a very nice place. And again, if you get there early, it's not too crowded. The chapel is right adjacent to it. This is on Tremont Street. Further down Tremont Street is the Granary Burial Ground. We'll be in a moment. Further down from there is Boston Common. walking toward the uh, chapel and we'll be making our way down Dreamwood Street Now, this is the Granary Burial ground, Burying Ground. It is the third oldest cemetery or burial grounds in Boston. And there are lots and lots of famous people here. Um, three signers of the Declaration of Independence are here. Samuel Adams, John Hancock, and Robert Treat Payne. 
When you first walk in, immediate right will lead you to Samuel Adams' grave and the grave of the five victims of the Boston Massacre as well. Now this burial ground was founded in 1660. There are 2,345 markers. They believe, they estimate that there are about 5,000 burials here. Again, scenic, quiet place, respectful place. In the background, that obelisk is the grave of Benjamin Franklin's parents. He is buried in Philadelphia. This is the graveside of the victims of the Boston Massacre, the five people who were killed by British troops, and one young man who died in a separate incident with the British 11 days before. And this is a Samuel Adams um, gravesite. Distant cousin, our second president, John Adams. John Adams' brother is also buried here, however. Peter Adams. Most of the notable grave sites have a little American flag next to them, although every once in a while they don't. You'll, you'll run across one that you recognize. There are graves or tombs in the foundation of the, of the church, of the building. There are tombs in the walls. Robert Treat Payne, this is one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. It's a quiet place on a very busy street. Paul Revere's gravesite. And again, as you can see, sometimes the, the markers are in poor condition. Peter Faneuil, the, the uh, benefactor of Faneuil Hall. James Budden, he was the uh, second governor of Massachusetts. This is a gravestone of Frank. He was a servant to John Hancock, and that is John Hancock's grave. Evidently, Hancock thought enough of him to have him buried in his, in his own plot, the family plot. Again, the Franklin, parents of Benjamin Franklin. And then we walked a little further down to Boston Common. Boston Common is, uh, again, on Tremont Street, uh, from 1634, it's 44 acres. It's been everything from grazing land to places, the place of execution, uh, city park. Site of the Boston Bread Riot in 1713. This was also where the British had a military encampment during the Revolutionary War. When they left that night to go toward Lexington and Concord, they left from Boston Common. But it's a very pretty scenic park. Again, in the heart of a very busy city. The smoking tea kettle on this Starbucks is kind of cute. And this is across the street from there, Faneuil Hall.
believe this is an exit to Cops from Cops Hill. Again, the um, monument to Bunker Hill, the Battle of Bunker Hill. The architecture is very, very pretty. Uh, I like the, the red brick. It's uh, now I assume that most of these or many of these really old buildings are nationally historic uh, protected areas, and I'm sure that altering their facade is probably illegal. But um, they're very pretty. They're worth uh, saving. Massachusetts State House across from Boston Common. There's also, along one road, along one side of Boston Common, is the Cheers Bar, if you're a fan of the television program Cheers. Uh, I've got a couple of little clips coming of it, but I was on the wrong side of the trolley. Didn't get really good video, but it uh, gives you an idea. I understand that nothing on the interior looks anything like it did in the show, but on the second floor there is a complete mock-up of the Cheers bar from the television program. I guess what surprised me was just really how compact the the city center really is. Um, that part of it at least is is very walkable. Again, Dunkin' Donuts. I think it was founded just outside of Boston, a suburb outside of Boston. Perhaps that's why there's so many in the area. And again, once we had gotten through with our particular items that were on our list that we really wanted to get down and walk around and see up close, we had plenty of time left, uh, certainly much more than the two hours it takes to go around the, the, the entire tour. So we got back on at stop one and made the entire tour, again, just to see anything we might have missed. Um, and still got back to the ship in ample time. So uh, overall, it was a, a system that worked quite well for us and might for you as well, depending on what you're, you're looking to do. It certainly is a very easy option. This is the, the short video. Like I say, I was shooting from the wrong side of the, the trolley, but that is the entrance to the Cheers bar. Um, and of course, there's scaffolding in front of it. They were doing work. And uh, now that seems to be quite a common theme, both in Boston and New York, scaffolding everywhere. A lot of renovation going on in different places. But as you can see, the Cheers Bar is a very popular place. People want to go in and take a look. But you get to go through some uh, parts of the city, residential, or what used to be older residential areas and uh, see these really beautiful buildings um, that probably still are uh, individual homes. Some of them are businesses. The tree line street, very, very, it, it's, there's some very pretty neighborhoods here. Again, the architecture is, is, is very impressive. But you do get a good overview of the city with lots of options uh, to get off and on wherever you want to. Give you some options that you might not have thought were, would be possible. 
And actually, we just thought about the, the hop-on, hop-off trolley at the last minute. Uh, weren't really sure how we were going to get to central Boston. Um, but this worked out. And again, on days when ships are in port, um, the trolley will make that the last stop. Now, of course, in any big city, you're going to run across protests of one type or another. And this was a protest we happened to drive up on. And this was uh, a group of people evidently protesting against any new prisons for women. They believe that women should not be imprisoned. Hmm, not sure. Um, but it was interesting to watch, and they held up traffic briefly. It wasn't a big deal, but um, you never know what you'll see in the city. We finally caught up and were able to pass them and get ahead of them, so that worked out. They didn't seem to be drawing too much support from the local crowd, I must say that, so. But they were active, they were loud, they were enthusiastic. The parks are very, very pretty, well kept up. Again, the State House. That's the old South Meeting House, I believe. And this is the so-called location of the Boston Tea Party. It's actually not. The Boston Tea Party site is actually to the left of this under a hotel parking lot uh, that has been reclaimed by landfill. But this is close. This is close to where the Tea Party occurred, and this is where the little museum and the replica boats are. the tea ships that were in the harbor at the time. They were the Dartmouth, the Eleanor, and the Beaver. And we finally end the tour back at Black Falcon Cruise Terminal. And uh, it was a very, very pleasant day, a pleasant tour, and uh, certainly recommend it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a bit long. I apologize for that, but uh, appreciate all of our subscribers, and uh, we're looking for more. And stay with us and we'll have another video soon. Thanks for watching.